The newly elected Somali parliament convened for the first time with the new legislators sworn in. And this brings the country a step closer to completing a prolonged electoral process that's been marred by allegations of corruption and irregularities. 298 members of parliament and senators took the oath of office at a ceremony held at Aden Adair International Airport in Mogadishu. In the coming days, lawmakers will elect speakers and deputies for both parliamentarian chambers before they sit to choose a new president. A series of delays, including an agreement on how elections should be conducted and political infighting between the president and the prime minister, has further derailed the process. After two decades of conflict, state collapse and weak transitional governments, the Horn of African nation has struggled to hold elections by more than a year, resulting in lawmakers extending President Mohamed Abdullahi's mandate. Well, for a little more on this, we're now joined by advocate Evans Ogada, who's a researcher and a member of the Law Society of Kenya's Public Interest Litigation Committee. Um, thank you so much indeed for joining us, advocate. Uh, always good to talk to you. Um, is Somalia a step closer to elections, or is this another false start? Well, good evening, uh, Peter, and happy Easter to you and the viewers. Well, that is certainly the hope that uh, they are closer to conducting elections. Remember that elections for the president in Somalia are conducted by parliament. It is certainly the hope of the citizens of Somalia and those of us who are neighbors that this certainly should lead to elections. But uh, Somalia being Somalia and the nature of their politics, uh, we will adopt our wait and see attitude. Uh, remind us again why it has taken so long. Um, the previous um, country leader, his term expired and there should have been an election by then already. Yes, elections were to have been conducted uh, upon the expiry of President Mohammed, uh, better known as Farmajo. His term expired in February uh, 21st, 2021. However, Parliament was not it did not have the uh, requisite numbers and uh, we had to have um, parliamentarians being nominated by certain constituencies that brought it to uh, an optimum number of around 298 from a possible 329. Now with that 298 figure, it is believed that they can now proceed to conduct uh, elections for the president. So it's a difficult scenario. Remember, Somalia does not elect the president in the ordinary one man, one woman vote like the rest of the continent. And this has not happened for over 50 years now. All right. I mean, let's talk a little bit more about this uh, complex Somali process, because in the end, actually, only a few thousand people actually even get to vote for those people that are sitting in parliament that will vote for the president to represent 16 plus million people. Some might say this isn't democracy. Why is it that Somalia is uh, structured in this way? Well, it's, it's a mixture of both the colonial legacy, uh, the clan uh, fragmentation in Somalia, and predominantly the insecurity situation in Somalia. Let me start with the insecurity. Uh, Somalia and the, uh, the interim government only has a solid presence around uh, uh, Mogadishu, uh, Kismayu, select towns. It does not have solid uh, presence in uh, the better part of Somalia. Secondly, uh, Somalia has been fraught with uh, clan uh, factions. It's been fighting uh since 1992 because of the clan division so uh, the unity that you'll expect of of an effective government and an effective state system is absent in somalia so those are some of the the the, the challenges that uh, somalia faces and it as such it is incapable of holding uh, elections in 
the manner that uh, we will expect of any uh, uh, viable uh, uh, strong state. If these clans are so powerful, will a president genuinely have authority over the country or is he, I don't know, almost ceremonial to a degree if the clans are very powerful and... Um, as you say, there's always these uh, clashes that seem to take place. Well, uh, anybody who comes in as president in Somalia has to negotiate. We have this phenomenon in Somalia called negotiated democracy. You have to gain acceptance of the major clans. If these major clans don't endorse you, and if they don't accept you, then you're going to have a problem. And you you should have noticed that that was a scenario when uh, Farmajo, President Mohammed, fell out with uh, major stakeholders and his uh, hold on power had to be uh, negotiated by outside forces, including the United States and the European Union, which prevailed on these clans to allow him to serve in the interim so that elections can take place. So it is a prerequisite that you have to negotiate and you have to agree with these clans. What are we expecting to see play out then uh, in the coming weeks? Well, we expect parliament to the board, the, the lower house and the upper house, we expect to have a joint sitting uh, after the, uh, the election of both speakers. When that joint speak, uh, sitting uh, will be convoked, when it will happen, we expect uh, a date for the presidential election to be announced. Uh, if all goes well and we don't see uh, the kind of uh, uh, bloodbath that happened in Hargeisa, Somaliland, where uh, there was a fire the other day and uh, the, the usual bomb attacks that happened in Somalia, then the presidential election should proceed. And hopefully uh, that should happen uh, with, within the next uh, six months. And whoever becomes president, is that person a president of all of Somalia or just Mogadishu, given the power of uh, militants such as Al-Shabaab? Well, the president of the, the Somalia faces challenges irrespective of who assumes the reign uh, the african union has been having a very difficult task of course propped up by the the americans and the european union to try and show up uh, the central uh, government in somalia uh, it's always going to be a challenge uh, uh, somaliland is hell-bent in pulling away the same with puntaland uh, somalia needs a lot in terms of uh, 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 showing up the, the, the authority of the central state. All right. So what, what will they do about al-Shabaab? Um, I guess the West is quite interested in the situation in Somalia because um, we saw the Americans uh, wanting to make sure the union of, uh, I think it was uh, Islamic courts, uh, UIC ousted in its day, Al-Shabaab, um, again, uh, a terrorist threat. Um, the, the West is watching with interest, I guess, what happens in Somalia coming, uh, in the coming weeks. Well, it's not only the West, Peter, even uh, the neighbors, Kenya, um, uh, Tanzania, all of us neighbors to Somalia are interested in having uh, stability in Somalia. Uh, the Al-Shabaab menace, unfortunately, will not be solved by military might. Uh, uh, the Al-Shabaab phenomenon is more or less A, a spiritual, a philosophical, mental problem. And this has to be done for us to solve Al-Shabaab. We have to bring in infrastructure, we have to create opportunities, we have to um, uh, create social amenities, uh, bring in the infrastructure and involve these clans, let them own the state. But if the corruption and the aloofness of uh, the central administration in Mogadishu continues, and uh, with outsiders getting involved, 
uh, not much will happen. The Somalis have to own the process of Somali re Somalia reconstruction. That has to originate from them, and that is the only way mm. to solve the Al-Shabaab problem. All right, perhaps uh, as we uh, wrap this conversation up, let's uh, go back to where we started in this uh, pending electoral process. Uh, are any names starting to come to the fore? Are there any strong positions uh, that are coming through in terms of who might occupy uh, the position of, of president? Well, we have uh, a former president, a former president, the current prime minister is also said to be running, Prime Minister Roble. Those are uh, the front uh, names that are being uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, we have uh, uh, another two former president and prime minister. Uh, these are solid, uh, formidable leaders in their own right. Uh, it's quite uh, uh, difficult to tell who will emerge as the winner. Uh, like I said, uh, it's always difficult to uh, predict the nature of uh, the clan host trade. This will only uh, be able to unravel in the uh, weeks ahead when uh, the give and take happens. All right. Advocate Ogada, thank you very much indeed. Always good talking to you. Your insights are greatly appreciated. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your Easter weekend. Happy Easter. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Asante sana. That's uh, Advocate Evan Zogada speaking to us. Uh, he's a researcher and a member of the Law Society of Kenya Public Interest at Litigation Committee as uh, MPs have been chosen in Somalia, which means uh, that uh, they could be electing a president in the country soon. But uh, for that person, that may be just the first step in uh, trying to deal with a number of challenges, including militants al-Shabaab.